So let's make a start on this anemone, but before we dive in, many thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. We're going to chat about them a little bit later on, but for now, let's get started. So the colours that I've chosen for this anemone are as follows, but please use the nearest that you have. This is Cobalt Blue Violet by Daniel Smith. Next, we have Quinacridone Red. This one is by Windsor & Newton. Followed by Moon Glow by Daniel Smith. This is a really beautiful kind of granulating colour. Then we have Olive by Windsor & Newton. Followed closely by Sap. Again, this is by Windsor & Newton. So here we have all the colours swatched out as you can see and I've done a simple outline of my line drawing. I'm using the cold press paper and we provide you with a free trace down line drawing and reference photograph and I'll give you details later on in this video on how you can obtain them. You can of course draw freehand but I like to trace down my joints because it saves a little bit of time and you can press on with all of the painting elements. The brushes that I'm using are a selection of different sizes. I will explain as I go through which sizes I'm using. I have a clean glass of water, some paper towel, and um, a little palette here on the side. Notice that I put a, a puddle of water in the middle. This helps with controlling the amount of paint that you have on your palette, and I highly recommend that you use this. Now, I have to say, if you're new to watercolour painting, I highly recommend that you watch this video all the way through, simply because watercolour always has that kind of ugly duckling stage where you think that your painting is wrong, but if you watch the process unfold right the way through to, until the end, you'll notice that it is just a case of being patient and layering up your paint slowly and carefully. So to begin with, I have a watery mix of cobalt blue violet and I'm applying this all over the anemone as you can see here. I'm using a number five round brush. This is a synthetic brush and this particular one is by Da Vinci. Use whichever brush that you feel comfortable with. You'll notice that I've left a gap in one of the petals on the side there. This is because it has a slightly different hue and we're working, as I said, from light to dark. I've applied that colour in its lightest form over that little petal and while we're waiting for that to dry we can start to mix our base colour of the stem and the, the little leaves that you can see here. Now forgive me, I'm not sure whether they are called leaves, are they fronds with a, um, when we're talking about anemones? I'm not sure if you know what they're called, drop it in the comments below, but for the purposes of this tutorial we'll call them leaves so that you know what I'm talking about. So I've used a mixture, a really watery mix of olive green on the stem and I'm using sap green on this element here. Again, you'll notice how weak this wash is to begin with because this is the colour that we will be building up our layers later on. So this will form the sort of um, colour that we can see underneath. It's kind of like our underwash, if you like. Using the tip of my number five brush just to work down the stem and take great care to stay within the pencil lines as you work through. I mix in a tiny puddle of quinacridone red here with the green, so it's quinacridone red with olive and you can see that I'm applying this to the base of the stalk where it hits the leaves. If you look carefully at the reference photograph which I've kept in screen you can see it has an element of a kind of burgundy red tone so we'll keep that there. So now that everything's dry we can start to think about building up our colours. So we have cobalt blue violet and a tiny petal of quinacridone red. You'll notice from the reference photograph that this petal has a lovely gentle pink hue and that's where the quinacridone red works really, really well. I'm adding a bit of the cobalt blue violet on the outside edge here just to give it a bit more colour and then gently merging the two together like this. Quinacridones are, are really good for their kind of ink-like quality so they're very transparent colours and you'll notice that I only used a tiny amount of paint. If you don't have cobalt blue violet, you could mix two colours together, something like um, a Windsor violet or any sort of purpley colour that you have, and you could mix it with French ultramarine. This will give you a very similar tone. Notice how I was pulling the colour into the damp paint to help them merge together like this. So using the second layer of paint here, I'm applying it where I think the darker values are. in my brush dry 
using the residual paint on my brush to blend the colour into the petal like this, making sure that I leave a lighter element where it's needed. You'll see that this tiny little puddle of water in the middle of my palette here is really useful for sort of blending in the colour. If I were to dip my brush in the jar, it would flood the brush with water and it would be very difficult to control. You'll notice that the paint that I have, the Cobalt Blue Violet, is separating. That is because it's a mixture of tones and you will need to mix it if you're using this colour because it does separate in the palette. Talking of palettes, this little palette here I have comes from Etcher. I bought it from Jackson's and it actually comes in a, in a pack of two. The second one has lots of different wells. It's great for painting when you're using different colours and I will link the, that and all the other materials I'm using in the description box underneath this video. So you can see me now using the tip of my number five brush, cleaning it in the little puddle, patting it on my kitchen paper and blending it like this. I do have a particular method of applying my paint and I have done a separate video on this. If this is something that interests you, I will link it on the top of your screen so that you can click through and watch it after this video. So this petal is dry now, we can add another layer of paint and begin to create a little bit more dimension. I've completed the process on all of the other petals and I'm using my number three spotter. This is a red dot spotter from Rosemary & Co. Um, I have used sable brushes in the past, but um, now I use these synthetic ones. I prefer them for a lot of reasons. Um, but this is an old sable one that I had that I felt that I needed to use up. Um, it has a lovely fine point and spotters are very similar to round brushes, but they are they have a shorter bristle, which means that you can control your paint better. Now at the start of this tutorial, I mentioned that there is a free reference photograph and line drawing to go with this tutorial. And in fact, all of our tutorials here on YouTube. There are a couple of ways that you can access these. First of all, in our Facebook group. Um, so do consider joining us over there. We have um, a wonderful community and you can post your finished paintings from our tutorials and have some feedback from me and our other wonderful members. So I will link that in the description box underneath this video, but I will also put them at the end. So if you watch this video right the way through, I'll put them right at the very end. You can screenshot it and then um, print them out that way. So this is my number zero brush. This was um, sent to me from a company called Panart. And this is a really fine point. This is a synthetic round. And I'm just using a slightly thicker mix of cobalt blue violet and applying it like this, adding a little bit of detail at this point. You can of course use any brush that you have that has a fine point that gives you a little bit of control over your paint. So I'm just continuing this process now with this fine brush, creating some veins as I work through the anemone. Now, of course, keep in mind that we've still got quite a lot of layers to go through. So just wanted to put these details in to give myself an idea of how this is going to look a bit later on. So we have Cobalt Blue Violet here by Daniel Smith. And as I said before, if you don't have this color, you can easily mix something very similar by mixing French Ultramarine with a nice purple color. At this point, when I'm adding the finer detail, I make sure that my paint is slightly thicker on my palette. This means I have better control. If the paint is weak and watery at this point, it just means that you won't have as much control over applying your paint. So notice how I'm using a lighter touch to apply the fine veining on this middle petal and I'm also dropping in a tiny bit of that pigment on the outside edge just to give it a little bit more colour. So you can see that you need to keep mixing this um, pigment of Cobalt Blue Violet and I've just done, so I've just mixed it up a little bit and just applying this slightly thicker value to this middle petal here. I'm using my fine brush, cleaning it 
and just patting it dry and blending it through as I would ordinarily do. Okay, so this is the wonderful Moon Glow by Daniel Smith. We're not using it to its full advantage in this tutorial because it is a really sort of special granulating colour. If you don't have Moon Glow, you could use something like a neutral tint, but I had it within my kit, so I decided to use it here. I have two separate puddles. Um, one is slightly thicker than the other, and you can see me applying the paint wet on dry there, straight onto the paper like this. And I'm also using it to define some of the shadow areas where the petals overlap. Cleaning my brush as usual, patting it dry and blending it like this. And also using the thicker mix of Moon Glow to outline the petals as you can see me doing here. I've made a separate video where I did a tutorial painting um, a flower with just Moon Glow on its own. And I also created my own little recipe for Moon Glow. So again, if that's something that you'd like to check out, I'll put an information card on the screen and you can click through to that one and watch it at the end of this video. Watercolour is all about building up these beautiful layers and by layering the paint really slowly and letting it dry with between each layer it means that your paintings won't go muddy or look overworked. So this is back to Moon Glow and you can see me now just dotting in some of the anther or stamen and I'm just adding some random dots here and there. I'm not strictly going true to the photograph, I'm just creating a little bit of value here and there and you can see I'm just painting in some little um, fluffy bits by just moving my brush like this to create the illusion of the centre of the flower. And we can build these up a little bit later on, remember this is just our first wash for the central part of the flower. Just gently working around, sharpening up those edges with Moon Glow. There's a shadow area here, so you can see me using this number zero brush and blending it through to soften that inside edge. And we're back to Cobalt Blue Violet. And you can see the way I'm applying the paint, just creating a little bit of, um, a little bit of veining and a little bit of texture, dipping between my Moon Glow and the Cobalt Blue Violet. You can see me here outlining some of the middle areas of the plant and sharpening up some of those outside edges. So you'll need a little bit of patience for this one to work around all these little stamen and anther, gently creating circular shapes like this. This will give the viewer of your painting the illusion that all these little shapes are in place by adding the darker value next to the lighter and mid-tones that we applied earlier on. It's already taking shape, but remember to stay right until the end where you can have access to the line drawing and the reference photograph. So using a very steady hand to create some filaments there. 
And again, just outlining some of the anther like this. Or is it the stamen? Let me know in the comments. I never remember which is which. So cleaning my brush and my little puddle and I'm just adding a tiny bit of quinacridone red. I felt that the centre had a tiny bit of a red tint to it, so that's what we're doing here. And just blending it through. It's very, very subtle, but I think it's there. And just dropping in the moon glow like this. This is wet on wet, so we have a mixture of moon glow with quinacridone red. And now I'm going to glaze over the entire thing with just plain water, avoiding the centre. Once the water has dried and it has to be completely dry, we can really start to build up those colours. You can see how this makes everything kind of unify together. It's just something I like to do at this point. If you're a little bit nervous about doing that, don't worry. And you can see me there just lifting out a tiny little highlight in the centre. Going back to the green, so we have olive green here. Just going straight onto the paper now. And just adding a tiny bit of quinacridone red because we've got that brownie tone where it hits the, the, the leaves of the anemone. And a tiny bit of moon glow. Um, just to give that a little bit of a darker value there, using that tiny little brush. Notice how I've applied the green tone to the inside edge only of that bit of the stem, working the moon glow up like this, and then I'll blend that into the lighter colour. We don't want this to have a solid colour as such, we want it to have a little bit of dimension, and if we lose that outside edge, don't worry, we can darken the inside one a little later as I'm doing here. So that makes it look a little less flat and gives it a little bit more dimension. If you are new to this channel, we do launch full length tutorials on our YouTube channel every single Tuesday. So if this is something that interests you, then do consider subscribing and hitting that bell. That way you'll be informed every time I upload new content. And if you are finding value in this video, please give me a big thumbs up to show me some love and let YouTube know that you enjoy my content. Now we are also on Instagram at The Wonders of Watercolour, so do consider taking a look at our Instagram where we try to post daily and there's lots of different fun stuff over there including behind the scenes things. If you already follow me on Instagram, you may have noticed a dramatic improvement in my photographs. If you're spending a lot of time painting, it's a really good idea to take really strong photographs of your artwork to post on social media. And I felt that my artwork photos definitely needed improving, so I turned to Skillshare, who are the sponsors of today's video. Skillshare are an online learning platform with thousands of classes and members across 150 countries. Skillshare is a place to gain inspiration and learn new skills. And because Skillshare have so many courses to choose from, you can be as creative as you want to. I was so keen to improve my Instagram posts, to show off my paintings and make it a lot more interesting for people to look at. So I found an amazing photographer called Sean Dalton, who has a class specifically aimed for people who want to take better photographs of their artwork. So it seemed right up my street. In Sean's class, I learned how to do everything from start to finish, including setting up my shot, shooting outdoors and everything that will make my photograph really, really impressive. Photograph and art is a lot trickier than you think. And even things like setting up your room to make it look really presentable for photographs, setting the photograph scene, shooting in a studio or even shooting outdoors. Sean explains with easy to follow steps, making everything super easy to understand. Sean has a lovely manner and I really, really enjoyed his classes and I highly recommend them if you want to learn how to level up your social media posts with amazing photographs of your artwork. Sean is an amazing photographer and breaks the course down into easy to follow steps so that you can pause it and watch them without any really annoying adverts. This art photography course, as you can see here, was such an incredible course to do. You don't have to have a fancy camera to do this course. You can use your smartphone just to create amazing photographs. With Skillshare, you can have access to different classes and subjects depending on what you want to learn because Skillshare caters for a lot of different topics from flower arranging to crafting to yoga, 
anything that you want to do and you can switch from classes whenever you want to. If you have a particular skill that you're trying to learn, then Skillshare is the perfect place to start. If this sounds like something that you're interested in, the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description box or my code Helen Campbell will have a free one month trial of Skillshare and that includes new premium classes that are launched every week. So you will always have something new to discover. So thank you once again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. A class that I highly recommend and if you've seen my Instagram posts sort of fairly recently you'll notice that my um, photographs of my artwork are so much better. I absolutely loved it. Okay let's get back to the painting. So here now I'm mixing sap green with a tiny bit of the cobalt blue violet and you can see me here adding this to the layer that has now completely dried on the leaves like this. Only this time I'm going to be leaving a tiny bit of a gap so we have that negative space to create that vein and then just work around it like this, applying the rest of the colour onto the leaf but just making sure that we keep out of that negatively painted vein. So just taking the rest of this colour with my number zero brush all over the leaf like this and you can see how by adding a tiny bit of the, um, this is moon glow just to darken up some of the colours where I felt it was needed and once again blending it through. You can see that by adding a tiny bit of either the cobalt blue violet or the moon glow to the green gives it that lovely dark tone. And just outlining the outside of the edges of the leaves with my brush and I do apologize for calling them leaves. Um, let me know in the comments if you know the proper name. I'm pretty sure they're fronds but um, as I said earlier we'll call them leaves for now but it does feel wrong somehow. Okay just carry on working around them just giving them a little bit of an outline here working wet on wet. So where I've applied the green color I'm now applying the, um, the green with the purple tone or you could even add like I said the moon glow and just adding some more colour like this. And just continuing the process on the rest of the leaf. I'm just outlining the inside, this side, the right hand side of the stalk with the same colour purple. So like I said, it doesn't matter whether you use moon glow or whether you use the purple tone, as long as you've got that kind of contrast between one and the other. So just sharpening up the edges here. So now I'm adding a tiny bit of the quinacridone red. So we want this to have this kind of ready uh, brownie tone and just dropping it into the top element of the leaf like this. You'll notice from the photograph that it definitely has this kind of brownie tone. So this is a really good time to put that in. So at this stage of the painting, it really is a case of just building up the layers and following the process that I've shown you throughout this tutorial. We still have quite a lot of things to do on this painting, building up the colours to create the, um, the depth of colour that we need. But because it's the same process, I'm going to stop talking and let you watch the rest of this painting tutorial in peace and play you some nice music so that you can relax and enjoy watching me painting. So 
make sure that you stay right until the end of this tutorial. As I said at the start, we'll be putting up the line drawing and the reference photograph for you to uh, screenshot and print out if you want to do it that way. And of course, they're in our Facebook group. Details will be in the description box underneath this, this video. Thank you for watching. Stay till the end and remember to give it a big thumbs up if you like it. See you next time.